Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video and in this video we're going to be trying to revive my iPhone SE. This iPhone was sitting for a long period of time up on my collection shelf and I actually went to use it a couple of months ago only to find out that the entire device was non-functional. It didn't charge, it didn't vibrate, it didn't line up at all uh, and appeared 100% dead. You may remember this iPhone from the iPhone SE restoration. I did fully repair this device with a new LCD as it was absolutely destroyed. As you can see here, the device no longer functions. Plugging it into the charger, nothing happens. Pressing the power button, the home button, nothing happens. No battery flat symbol uh, or anything like that. So we're gonna be trying to revive that in this video. One of the biggest iPhone killers out there is cheap power adapters and lightning cables. If your iPhone died while on a cheap, no-name charger, there's a 99% chance that you fried something on that logic board of the iPhone and even if it could be retrieved by a board level repairer, it would be a very pricey repair. I have seen instances of people using these cheap no-name chargers can have their iPhone touchscreen flip out, have major lag uh, when plugged into these chargers, and I've also been told stories of people's cables catching fire or even blowing up. Just imagine what these chargers and cables are doing to the components inside your iPhone. Luckily, I didn't use any of those chargers or cables with my iPhone SE. It simply died just because it was sitting on my display shelf. If you have an iPhone that doesn't turn on after a long period of time in storage, then you have a much higher chance to fix it. So in this video, I'm going to be opening up my iPhone SE and just taking a look inside it and seeing if I can revive this thing back into functional condition. Now the battery in this iPhone had quite a high health rating on it, so I was confident about the battery being fine. But one of the steps you want to be taking when obviously trying to revive a dead iPhone is check the obvious things. Try hard resetting uh, power-wise the iPhone, as well as try using a different charger or a different cable, obvious things like that. But if it's still not powering on, you're going to need to go ahead and open up the device. Uh, the first thing I'd be doing is testing it out with a new battery, and then testing it out with a new dock connector, and if that still doesn't work, even try it with a new LCD if you have one laying around. Although that isn't likely to do anything, if your iPhone repeatedly vibrates or makes the charger sound, then it's likely that your LCD is faulty. So I'm gonna be doing just that with my iPhone SE. So first point of call is the battery. Now, the battery tabs in these things snap super easily. So if you wanna do this, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the dock connector first. And then once you actually get those pull tabs, you wanna cut them in half so you get one tab uh, each pull, which means you have to do it twice but once they come out, it will just literally fall out of the device. I've had these snap on a number of occasions, so make sure to remove the dock connector to allow enough room for those tabs to be removed. Connecting the battery up to my charging board, you can see that it's completely stone dead uh, and has no charge in it whatsoever. The new battery is charged and uh, should hopefully work in this iPhone. Now, if you wanna just test this out, you should just be able to be able to sit the battery on top of the old one and just connect it without actually installing it in the device. But I was confident, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, just take out the battery uh, with the pull tabs. And then I could go ahead and reassemble the dock connector into the device. Now, if you do not remove the dock connector, you have about a 90% chance of ripping those uh, battery tabs. Every time I've done it without removing the dock connector, I immediately snap those tabs. Uh, so when I'm installing my new battery, I tend to install these iPhone 5 uh, battery adhesives. It makes absolutely no functional difference on the device. It's just if you ever have to take the battery out or replace it again, it's so much easier uh, just to have a sl slightly less uh, stronger adhesive on it so it comes out a lot easier and you don't have to deal with those pull tabs. Next up, I can go ahead and reassemble the device and just test it out and see if the new battery was successful in repairing this device. Now, like I said, if this doesn't work, try a new dock connector. And if you have one around, I'd try a new LCD. Obviously, check the obvious things like does it show up in iTunes, things like that. Uh, if your device is water damaged, uh, go ahead and check out attempted water damage retrieval uh, video I did a while back. But this is just because my SE suddenly stopped turning on. Now, once you uh, are reassembling the device, you want to make sure uh, to reconnect that home button cable. And when you're pulling up the display as well, be super careful of that cable because if you rip it, you will ruin Touch ID forever. Uh, if you replace that, you'll get the home button functionality, but you'll never get that Touch ID back unless you get Apple to do it themselves. And they'll charge you for a screen replacement and it's a very costly process. So just take your time and make sure not to rip or damage that cable. 
There's a little bracket that goes over that, and once you've installed that, we can go ahead and test out the device and see it power on for the first time in absolutely forever. And you can see that everything is still functional on the device. And this actually was surprising. I thought this issue was board level given the fact that uh, it showed no battery flat or anything uh, like that. So now I can go ahead and reassemble the iPhone and we can take a look at the finished product. You can see here that the iPhone has been retrieved and the reason that it wasn't powering on is that battery. Now it was stone dead uh, and that was a result of being drained below its uh, threshold, which basically means with lithium-ion batteries, once they go extremely uh, low voltage, the iPhone will refuse to charge that battery because it's below that threshold. Uh, so you won't see the battery flat icon or anything like that. The phone will just refuse to charge. If you go ahead and put a different battery in it though, it's obviously going to be charging right up. Now, if you do want to try and retrieve the battery, which is what I'm going to be doing here in this case, I went ahead and connected this stone dead battery up to my battery charging board here, which I just put off of eBay and basically let it charge for a few hours. And you can see that I was actually able to bring it back to life. Now, I haven't had all such good with retrieving dead iPhones. This one here, I believe, has been fried with a cheap charger. It shows absolutely no life with a new battery, new screen, or new dock connector. So that was a bust for that iPhone 5. But as for the SE that was perfectly working and then suddenly stopped working after just being sitting on my shelf for quite a while, uh, is now back up and running and fully functional. Now, I believe that this battery drain issue was coming from the dock that it was sitting on. Um, it was sitting up on my shelf on this aftermarket lightning dock. Um, it cost me about seven bucks on eBay. And that sort of goes to show with these cheap chargers and that even though I've never use this to charge the device just purely to sit up there on my shelf I believe that there must be some kind of uh, electronics in there maybe they're draining the battery on the iPhone itself as I did notice a significant drop in power just leaving that on that dock overnight so what's happened is it's dropped below that threshold and then the iPhone is obviously not charging it um, because of that battery drain on that lightning dock so make sure if you're going to be buying a dog feed device that you're getting a quality dock as well because that could be causing issues as well. I can't stress how important enough it is to have the quality chargers and cables for your devices. This doesn't just go for iPhones, this goes for any device you have that plugs into an outlet. You can see here I have a number of chargers and if you look at the writing on these, they make no sense. From some of them just saying power a dapper to ones being as generic as copyright 2010 company incorporated. Certified cables have the correct chips that communicate with your iPhone as well as the proper over voltage and current protections that you need. And on that note, this has been Hugh Jeffries' video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the iPhone playlist for more videos like this one. Also, make sure you're following my social media. Link will be in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.